Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about um, creating sheets in uh, in Revit using Dynamo, um, creating them from an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and kind of automating the whole process. Um, so the reason I'm doing that uh, in the first place is because I'm on the Revit project, and we have some consultants that are working on AutoCAD. And what ends up happening is that in order to create a one coordinated drawing list, um, I end up creating kind of placeholder sheets for the consultants that are in AutoCAD, um, trying to automate this process as much as possible or streamline it, make it uh, a little bit easier on myself so I don't have to manually type in. Um, I will receive a drawing list uh, from the consultants and then I will jump in Dynamo and create those really quickly so that they can. Uh, they get reflected in our uh, drawing list coming out of Revit. Um, one quick thing, you're probably asking me uh, uh, why am I not using your the typical three nodes that are in, uh, available in Dynamo. So these are the three nodes. Let's drop those in really quick. And so it's sheet by number, name, title block, view or views. Um, unfortunately, all three of those methods involve specifying a view that will go on that sheet. And as far as I know, and this was my Dynamo training 101 a few months ago for version 6.3, so I'm not sure if it's still valid for 7.1. Uh, in order for this node to work and be uh, active, you have to specify all of the inputs, and if you leave one of the inputs out, the node is going to throw up an error. I haven't actually tried this, but I just assume that it's, that's how it still works. And since I don't need views to be put on those dummy placeholder sheets for our consultants, um, I just rewrote that really quickly in Python. Um, I, I'll get to it a little bit later. Um, while I'm on this, I also, I also uh, wanted to get a few parameters specified. Uh, while I'm creating those new sheets so then they get sorted properly in the drawing list. Um, I could do that with the set parameter by name node uh, already available in Dynamo but um, I'll have to collect them out uh, out of the output of this Python and then you know drop in a few more nodes and specify new parameters and all that stuff. I, I just thought I would just do an all-in-one sweep as they're getting created parameters are getting set so let's start at the beginning. First things first, uh, I mentioned the Excel spreadsheet. So what you're going to need is to specify a path and a sheet number for Excel. Um, so let me bring this thing up really quickly. So this is a sample Excel spreadsheet file. Uh, two columns, really simple. First column, just the, uh, just the sheet numbers. Second column, just the sheet names. Um, this is your uh, sheet name. It says sheet one here. Uh, this is exactly the information that goes into this field, sheet one. Um, instead of code block, I'm using a code block here, which is a lot faster for string inputs. But you could type in string and get yourself a string. And if you type in sheet one, this and output of this code block is an exact same thing you can use either. Uh, by putting that sheet 1 in parentheses I'm saying that it's a string uh, and this assumes automatically that it's a string because it's in a string uh, component. Um, anyways, I just like to uh, use code blocks for all those inputs, even for numbers sometimes. Uh, just because you can double click and this window comes up and then all you have to do is just uh, type in whatever you're looking for, and you can you can you know, type in multiple multiple things at the same time. And just keep dropping them, and you create multiple outputs. So you, you see me probably using that. Uh, you'll see me using that here. Um, I don't know. I just prefer that instead of dropping three separate string nodes. But that's just the workflow preference. So once we have those two things, uh, we can read an Excel file, and an output of that Excel file, let's just get a little uh, watch note here, 
and let's uncheck this. So the output of an Excel file is basically each list represents uh, all the information in the row in the Excel. So it's actually grabbing 15, uh, I mean, uh, 15 columns, and these are rows. Uh, 15 columns, each list itself is a row. So then you can see that the first two items is a sheet number, sheet name, matched up together, and the rest of it is null. Because um, the list was empty. It was only A and B that I specified. So what we need is get those first two items from each one of those, uh, for each one of those rows that got imported. Uh, so I'm using list get item at index, bring those in, and then I'm using a list uh, list map to pull this out of this nested list so that I can only get those two. So the output of that operation here will be all the all the items and then it went a little bit farther, it grabbed 96, uh, 96 rows. Um, there's a way to delete that if you if you selected all these and just hit delete. Um, I don't know if there's a smarter way to specify how much stuff you actually want to bring in. Anyways, uh, you in the in the inevitably you're gonna bring in some null items with you. So what I'm doing here is another object uh, that checks if there's any nulls on the list and then I'm using filter by boolean mask because the output of that is going to be true or false so it's going to check every item on that list and tell me if it's null and then you see all the all the nulls are saying true and then you can use list by filter uh, to get just the non-null items so I end up with 54 items in the list zero comes as the first item remember that so I got 54 items on that list uh, these are my sheet names these are my sheet numbers for the new sheets that I want to create from the Excel. Um, next thing I'm doing is a, is a Python script. What that Python script does, really quickly, it breaks down it breaks down the sheet number and it strips it of all the spaces and it does the exact same thing. Uh, let me just bring that real quickly. It stri strips it of all, all the spaces and then it queries the project for all the sheets that are already in the project, pulls out that project's sheet number and does the same thing to it, stri uh, converts it to a string and strips it of all the spaces. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually checking whether any of the new Excel spreadsheet spread, uh, any of the new sheet numbers that were specified in the Excel spreadsheet that I got are already existing in the project. So what happens is then it splits it out uh, and it just gets rid of the ones that are already there and all I'm getting out of there is new sheets that need to be created. And since I don't have any sheets in the project right now, I got rid of all of those. Uh, before I run this example for you, then all 54 of the items are coming through. And then, you know, I'm getting my sheet numbers and sheet uh, names separately and they become inputs here. Another thing that you have to do is I'm um, using family types to get a title block. So I got a couple title blocks loaded in and then I'm using an element ID node which is a custom node you can download from my website to extract an actual element ID Revit API object and then it gets plugged in into my Python node. And there's three parameters that I'm specifying with that as well. Uh, parameter one is 100% CD, which is like a filtering parameter that I'm using. And then there's a drawing list filter, which is another filter that I'm using to, you know, split drawing list into volume one and volume two. And then there's a drawing list group, which I'm using to specify what consultant would that be. So this example I'm using the landscape consultant may go under 04 that's to group them together in the list um, other than that there's really nothing nothing more to it you throw in sheet name, sheet number all these all these uh, parameter names that you want to set 
and then uh, a couple more of these parameters and you're good so what's gonna happen uh, I'm actually gonna do this and I'm gonna hit run really quickly and you're gonna see the output change to it pulled out all the sheets they just created so it's 54 sheets that I created and then if I go to my sheets over here under 04 landscape which is the group that I put it in here are all my sheets and they also have this 100% CD parameter checked on and the drawing list filter set to V1 and then the drawing list group set to landscape 04 and those are the inputs that I specified over here 100% CD parameter was a checkbox so I used a true false boolean to uh, to get that don't forget that inputs have to be of specific type alright so let's do another thing I'm gonna test what's gonna happen if I delete a few of those and then imagine that I'm getting this list again and I want to run this again so I have to run this a few times to refresh it I have no idea how this thing actually works and how it refreshes or doesn't refresh but anyways you can see that my output is now only uh, 18 items so not all of them went through which is the number that I deleted. Uh, once that is refreshed, I can replug my last component so that my Python uh, executes. And then if I run this, this shows that I only created 18 new sheets. Perfect. And then all of a sudden I'm back to my 53. They all recreated. So there it is. Um, I'm going to post all that stuff on the uh, on my blog these are probably just gonna have to be uh, I'm gonna post code, I'm not gonna post this is custom nodes uh, they're very specific so it's not um, it's not like it, they can be reused with all these parameters specified you probably wanna add more parameters and whatnot. Um, so yeah thanks for watching um, I hope this workflow is helpful I'm gonna uh, try to post it tonight uh, on my blog so please follow me at uh, follow me on my twitter at archie at arc underscore laboratory or visit my website at uh, www.archie-lab.net to view those files, download the code, download the example files uh, all that stuff that I ever talk about, make videos about is usually on my website if it's not feel free to email me um, if I've feel comfortable sharing it, sometimes it's sensitive material and I don't always want to share it, I don't always can share it, um, I will share it with you if it's okay. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.